Welcome to our Tuesday Bible discussion, Speaking Words of Life. Whose words are you listening to? Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the people of God, his creation, in Jesus' name. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. God gave Adam and Eve the responsibility for the garden, mainly Adam, and told him not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Rather than physically preventing them from eating, God gave them a choice, and thus, the possibility of choosing wrong, people of God. God still gives us choices, and we too often choose wrongly. These wrong choices may cause us pain, but they can help us learn and grow and make better choices in the future. Living with the consequences of our choices teaches us to think and choose more carefully. Why would God place a tree in the garden and then forbid Adam and Eve to eat from it? Could it be that God wanted them to obey? But God gave them the freedom to choose, people of God. Without choice, Adam and Eve would have been like a prisoner, a puppet, and their obedience would have been hollow, people of God. The two trees provided an exercise in choice with rewards for choosing to obey and sad consequences for choosing to disobey. When we are faced with the choice, we should always choose to obey God. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You, sh you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, verses 3 through 5. And then, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. Did you hear that? Nor shall you touch it. That was a lie that Eve said. Listen, uh, people got the first sin seemed to be committed when Eve responded to Satan's question about eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Her response was a lie. Or as the world would say, uh, she stretched the truth changing the word of God to fit our own needs is still a lie. Why does Satan tempt us, people of God? Temptation is Satan's invitation to give in to his kind of life 
and give up on God's kind of life. Satan tempted Eve and succeeded in giving her to sin with the first lie. Ever since then, he's been busy giving us to sin. He even tempted Jesus. Amen. But Jesus did not sin. How could Eve has how could Eve have resisted the temptation of the enemy? By following the same guidelines we can follow. First, we must realize that being tempted is not a sin. We must realize, people of God, that being tempted is not a sin. We have not sinned until we give in to the temptation. Then, to resist temptation, we must, one, pray for strength to resist, two, run, sometimes literally run, and three, say no when confronted with what we know is wrong, what we know is the enemy's voice and not God's. James 1 and 12 tells of the blessings and rewards for those who don't give in to temptations, the manipulations, and the lies of Satan. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James chapter 1 verse 12. The serpent Satan tempted Eve by getting her to doubt God's goodness. He implied that God was strict and stingy and selfish, not wanting Adam and Eve to share his knowledge of good and evil. Satan made Eve forget all about what God had given her, and instead she focused on what God had forbidden her. We fall into trouble too. When we dwell on what God forbids rather than on the countless blessings and promises God has given us. The next time that you are feeling sorry for yourself and what you don't have, consider all you do have and thank God, people of God. Then your doubts won't lead you into sin. Like Adam and Eve, we have a choice as to the, whose word we choose to follow. Being free will agents of the gospel of Christ Jesus, God wants us to choose to follow his word and to resist the word of the enemy. The Ten Commandments says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger, who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. 
you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor your male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Exodus 20, 2 and 16. Besides the top 10 commandments, people of God, Father God has everyday living commandments that we must learn how to follow and obey. Every word spoken by God to us in his word and through a song, uh, through your pastor, through a friend, through a family member. When you hear the word of God, you have to know his voice. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Because God will examine what kind of workers we have been for him, people of God. So we should build our lives on his word and build his word into our lives. It alone tells us how to live for him and to serve him. Believers who ignore the Bible will certainly be ashamed at the judgment. Consistent and diligent study of God's word is vital. Otherwise, we will be lured into neglecting God and our true purpose for living, people of God. We must examine ourselves, test ourselves to show ourselves approved, people of God. We will be judged for everything done and said in the body. All through the word of God, we see God the Father and the Jesus the Son leading and correcting his children by his Holy Spirit. And as God's children, our reply should always be, Father God, you can lead me and where you lead, I will follow. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 to 17. Here we see the fall of man, the first act of disobedience the first sin, people of God, and the curse from sin. People of God, whose voice are you listening to? The fall of man. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat it, get this, nor touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. 
Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, she gave me the tree and I ate. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is it this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Hatred. He, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now least he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden with a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. We read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 24. People of God, this was the sentence of Adam and Eve from listening to the wrong voice. Today, we still struggle with making wrong choices from listening to the wrong voices. If they had only listened to the voice of the Lord God, they would have been able to eat from the tree of life. But instead, they listened to the devil and ended up being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. The whole plan of salvation is about choices, people of God. We must choose to believe God's word concerning his testimony of Christ Jesus. We must believe God and choose to obey his voice, his word. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. 
John chapter 10, verses 27 through 28. People of God, just as a shepherd protects his sheep, Jesus protects his people from eternal harm. While believers can expect to suffer on earth, Satan cannot harm their souls or take away their gift of eternal life with God. There are many reasons to be afraid here on earth because this is the devil's domain. But if we choose to follow Jesus, he will give us everlasting safety. As Father God continues to speak through his word, we understand his commandments. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. Psalms 32, 8. Our response should always be, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all the day. Psalms 25, 5. This should be our prayer daily. We must stop listening to other words, books, magazines, other spirits rather than the Holy Spirit, our, our mom, our boss, our, uh, you know, in every aspect of our life where there are voices that are speaking into our life. And we have to consult God in his word in order to hear him speaking. If we follow God's word, it will be a light to our path and a garland of grace around our neck. But if we listen and follow the enemy's words, they will become a stumbling block to our feet, a trap for our hearts, and an illusion to our minds. People of God, whose words are you listening to? Just like back in the day, a long time ago, but still alive today, we listen to the devil's words instead of listening to Father God's words. And today we allow the same enemy's lies to speak louder and manipulate us into sin rather than listen to the steel sweet voice of Jesus Christ. And we have come to know that sin, death, we must not allow, listen, and follow any other words than the word of God. We must ask the Holy Spirit to help us discern the truth from a lie. God's words over the devil's lies. Bind every word contrary to God's word before the throne of God. Don't listen to it. For it is written, the Lord rebukes you. So you got to actually bind these negative words. Anytime you hear the enemy speak in your life, you got to bind those words before the throne of God. Don't let them manifest themselves. If they get in your mind and your heart, you will eventually speak them out of your mouth. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Will he not perform what he said he would do? God will do what he said he would do, people of God. We have whose words are you listening to? That is the question today. That is what God is saying to you. You know, Eve, I want you to see this revelation in the word that God gave me. When we were talking about uh, the conversation between Eve and the enemy, she lied. She stretched the truth. She added something more than what God had told her. She said, uh, yeah, he said that if we can't touch it, uh, no, we can't eat it or touch it. 
Now that or touch it, God did not say. So that was probably the first lie that gave the enemy an opening and gave them a lie and a delusion to make them think that God was hiding something from, was withholding something from. So they listened to the enemy instead of God. Adam listened to his wife instead of God. We listen to our friends sometimes more than we listen to God. And God's word has to be final in our life. That's the only word we want to manifest itself in our lives. We don't want the enemy and what he's cursing and speaking over our lives. We don't want that to manifest itself. So that's why we got to bind those words when we hear the enemy speaking. We got to bind them right there, right there before the throne of God for it is written, the Lord rebukes you, Satan, in Jesus' name. So we bind all negative thoughts that the enemy have released on God's creation, manipulation and deceit. We bind before the throne of God any um, plots, plans, and schemes of the enemy that he has set up for our future generation against our children. We bind this spirit of uh, debauchery, this spirit of uh, drugs and alcohol, this spirit of me, myself, and I, this spirit of the signs of a retrobate mind, the spirit of a Leviathan operating our life. We have to know, people of God, the voices that are operating in our life and manifesting themselves so that we know which ones to bind before the throne of God, resist them. And then the enemy has to flee, people of God. So with that being said, if some of you that don't know Jesus have never accepted him in your life or you did know him and you backslid for some reason you know god the the church is the body of christ but it is a hospital for god's creation okay and we all go to the hospital in the emergency room some with a cut finger some with the hand cut off you understand what i'm trying to say and so you can't blame God for what is happening in the emergency room with the people. We are all flawed, okay? We all fall short, okay? So we have to pray for one another, bind these negative words before the throne. God, stop stretching the word and, and adding to it because it's still... It's a lie. Amen. It's a lie. So repeat after me if you don't know Jesus Christ. Father God, I've been living my life my own way, and now I want to live it your way completely. I believe that Jesus is your son and that he died for my sins and rose again for my justification. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and help me to be everything that you died for me to be for such a time as this in Jesus name hallelujah to the king of kings lord i pray that you would hide us behind calvary <coughs> restore everything that was stolen in the name of jesus christ we reverse the curse in the name of jesus christ we plead the blood over our household ourselves our families the people that our family members that get on the prayer list, Father God, everybody that you have put us in contact with, dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would meet them where they are, dear God, and lead and guide them, touch, heal, deliver, set free, help, mercy, dear God. If you don't come, we won't last. In Jesus' name, forgive me of my sins and help me to be with you created and died for me to be. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his creation, to his people. We love you. God bless you is our prayer, the benediction. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace, people of God. Peace. Shalom. Number 6 and 24 and through 26. People of God, we, we're giving you the scriptures because we want you to go back and do your own study. Ask the Holy Spirit to confirm the word that went forth today. He who has an ear, let him hear. Hear the words of God. Be able to uh, cipher, be able to discern the word of God from the words of the enemy. Okay? In Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you as I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.